Hey, I'm Barry Gardner, and today we're going to be changing the oil on a 2007 Hummer H3. So, let's get to it. So, once I got the truck up on the jack stands, first thing we're going to do is put on the emergency brake. And I'm also going to pop the hood. And once we get under the hood, we're going to remove the oil cap and just set it aside. And we're going to pull the dipstick out about halfway. The H3 has got two skid plates. You're going to remove both of those skid plates using a 13 millimeter socket and there are six bolts. So. I'm loosening up the bolts a uh, little bit. Uh, these back bolts you don't have to completely remove because they uh, they can just hang there and you'll see when you take the skid plate off there's a, an open hole that they can that they can uh, slide over to make it a lot easier. That one got stuck there, I didn't want to round it off. So just to make things a little faster, once I've loosened them up, I'm just sticking them on there. All right, so that's the first skid plate. And the second one's gonna drop a little bit because they're both held by those two bolts that are here. Last time I did this, I almost dropped the back one on my face. <laughs> so I'm trying to pay a little more attention this time. So as I said, these don't have to be completely removed. You can just slide it over the bolt with those big holes there, like so. So, I believe that the standard drain plug that comes with the Hummer H3 is 13 millimeters. But this one was replaced by General Motors a few years ago when we had a problem where it had broken. Uh, someone who had done an oil change before me had put it on too tight and the actual end piece had broken off. And it had to be drilled out of the oil pan and we had to put a new... Uh, bolt in there so this one happens to be 15 millimeters but it's always good to check and not just assume it's going to be straight 13 so there we go we're gonna crack that so it's finger tight you're gonna get the oil pan under it and this is the stupidest design for a beam to go under the oil pan but it will get messy, so hopefully not too messy as we try and catch this oil. And there we go. Yep, too messy. <laughs> if you have a magnetic drain pan uh, oil pan bolt check to see that there's no shavings or anything there which this does not have this is a magnetic bolt but there's nothing there so that's good and got my cardboard here so I can just set it there for now and we're gonna let that drain out as best we can without making more of a mess Five minutes later. I'm just gonna make sure this is nice and clean. There's a gasket already on this type of drain plug, so we don't have to put one in there. And then I'm gonna wipe down here. Where does it 
that drain plug back in there. Uh, a lot of people will tell you to torque your drain plug bolt to a uh, or your drain plug to a certain amount of foot pounds. Um, I personally like to just snug it up because uh, I did do an oil change one time on my motorcycle where I was torquing it to the right foot pounds. There we go. Just snug it up and. Uh, it was going a little too hard into the aluminum and the drain pan and uh, I did I did not over torque it but it just did not feel comfortable to me so I just snug it up and it's always does the trick so it should be pretty good um, but you could see there's the oil filter and there's this little plastic pan here that is supposed to catch oil that spills out and neatly pour it down the spout but it never works out that way. So I'm going to loosen up the filter and hope that the oil doesn't pour out as much as it has in the past and then we'll just go from there. Few moments later. Alright. So we got the oil filter off letting it drain from the nozzle there, but your oil filter is going to be full of oil, so you have to gently guide it through these hoses. It's going to spill, but see if you can get the spillage to a minimum. And there you go. And then once again, we let that drain. All right. So now, we're going to get under here in this little pan, and this little tray, whatever you want to call it, and try and get as much of that oil out. And then up top where the filter will screw in, we're going to wipe it clean, cleaner. So there is some oil up in there right now. I want to use a clean side cleaner side to this um, paper towel as I'm wiping up near the threads there normally I would not use a paper towel you don't want to get fibers from paper towel in your threads or anything like that but this this is uh there's not really a lot of time i'm spending wiping things down with this so it should be just fine i've done it before and i've had no issues with it okay so now we're going to prep our filter i'm using the mobile one m1-206a filter for the Hummer H3, 2007 Hummer H3. Uh, I'm not sponsored in any way by Mobile One or any other company uh, at this point. So I'm using what I like and what has uh, got a very good reputation. So what we're gonna do with the filter, I've got uh, the Mobile One 5W30 oil. Uh, it is advanced full synthetic. This is um, for high mileage, basically. Uh, I don't remember what we paid for this, but we actually got this at Sam's Club. We were able to get a box of six quarts, and this is exactly how much the Hummer H3 takes is six quarts, um, which is about 5.68 liters, if you're thinking metric in Canada or the UK or wherever I'm blessed to have somebody watching me. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to crack open one of these bottles and 
the very first thing we're going to do is just fill a little bit of oil into the filter just to kind of prime the filter um, we don't want to put too much in because as you saw taking the old filter off the filter is going to be tipped quite a bit uh, to get into that space some of the oil that has spilled on the top here um, you could either stick your finger right there into the bottle or just do what I'm doing and get some oil on your finger and put it on the gasket here so your gasket goes on smooth and makes it easier <laughs> easier than what I had to deal with to uh, to come off when it comes time to remove it okay so you can see where we're going to thread that filter just up there I've wiped it clean I'm gonna wipe it again one more time just before I put it in you're gonna to wanna to very gently screw that filter in you're gonna to wanna to thread it in nice and easy and then when you know it's moving smooth then you can tighten it up and with an oil filter you don't want to put any uh, torque with a tool on it you want to just snug it up hand tight Just gently, slowly get that thread started. And then once your filter's hanging on its own, then you can tighten it up. Screw it on there. And as I said, I'm gonna snug it up. I wanna get a decent grip on it. hand tight and then a little tighter all right so there is the new filter right there okay now with the oil drained the oil filter changed the drain plug put back in uh, it's time to add the oil so I've got this filter um, I use this uh, in all my vehicles uh, it's pretty cool, super quick fill funnel. Uh, it's made by Flow Tool. Once again, I don't have anything sponsored on this channel as of now, but uh, anyone from Flow Tool, if you see this, you want to sponsor me, let me know. So this fits nice into the hole, uh, the fill hole there, and it's they're pretty cool. When you're using one quart bottles, they'll or one liter bottles, they'll they'll fit in here and they can stay in there. There's a plane flying over. That's cool. Um, so we stick that in there. And then I'm going to start with the, the one bottle that I've already opened where we prime the filter, basically. I do hold the filter. I don't count on this not moving because it will move uh, depending on the vehicle it's sitting in. So I will slowly start to pour. We're going for six quarts. Now, often... And I'll just let that sit like that. That's what the whole thing is for. Uh, often, um, you know, you're told put in five quarts, uh, run your engine, check your level, and so on. Um, but I know this truck. Uh, I've been changing the oil on this thing for a long time, and uh, it will take six quarts. Doing everything that I've just done today, it will take six quarts. So I'm going to put in six quarts and then of course I am going to run the engine and we are going to check the oil but uh, I know six quarts is what it's going to take so these go pretty quick I'm not going to leave it in there to get every last drop but uh, every little drop does help yes. later and then we will put the dipstick back and we will put the cap back on 
and we will now start the engine and give her a test see how uh, see how our levels are all right so I'm gonna start it check for leaks let it run a little bit then we're gonna check the level Dipstick. And we are, I don't know if you can see that, but we are right where we want to be. Full. We're now going to put the skid plates back on. We're going to start with the rear one with those big bolts that are already there. We never took off. We're just going to put these large holes over them, kind of hook them in. There we go. And then tighten them up a little bit. Not a lot because we, we, think we need them to line up with these front ones so just enough that it doesn't come falling down on my head and then once we got that one up we're going to take this front one and the front has two little uh lips that's that protrude right here um i don't know what you want to call those but that's what it's going to rest on like so and then these two holes you're going to use the screws with that's what you're going to line up to put this all back together and again don't don't tighten everything down until you've got everything in there lined up threaded right like that's not. So, so this is not, there we go. There is one. See, I'm, this is moving a little bit to line it up properly, so that's why you don't tighten everything right away as you put them in. And then this one. Now, they're where I want them to be, so we'll tighten those up. These last ones secure. All right, so next we're going to go inside and reset your change oil uh, okay. indicator. So now we're going to reset your uh, oil change indicator. We're going to turn the key. Right to the accessory position we're going to leave it there not start the car and then you're going to get to oil life reset and then you're going to pump the brakes three times one two three
don't forget to disengage your parking brake if you have set your parking brake. Um, I hope you've learned something from this video. I learn something every time I do an oil change. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and subscribe to my channel. Until the next one, thanks. Thank you.